Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. Today we're going over unit 15 for seventh grade, level B. Um, we're going over our words and definitions just like we always do. I've already gotten a head start, that's okay. Remember you can um, follow along and add in and highlight just as you would with, um, if you were in class. I'm gonna be using a green highlighter today to highlight our words and a pink pen to write what is um, the words that might help you remember. We're on page 186 for unit 15, level B. Here we go. All right, the first one is authoritative. Now this might be a word that you've heard of before. It's somebody who is official, somebody who is in charge. Authoritative, it's an adjective. I'm gonna highlight official and I'm gonna write in charge to help me remember. Um, let's see. It's usually somebody who is in a very um, powerful state. Um, dic uh, dictatorial is another one, another adjective. Next one is bankrupt. That means you don't have any money. You're in a state of financial ruin. You have been ruined financially. If you've watched Tiger King, when he comes, I'm never gonna, he says, I'm never gonna be able to recover from this financially. That is because he thinks he's gonna go bankrupt from that experience. All right, a clamor is like a loud, continuous outcries, usually for help um, or something's wrong. It's not usually happy, but it's kind of negative. Um, I like uh, the word uproar to help, help us out. Um, loud continuous noise is both a noun and a verb. I'm going to highlight any loud and continuous noise and circle noun and verb so I remember that there are two forms of it. Okay, coincide means it can be, it happens at the same time or things are the same in a way. Um, they're the same in nature, character, or function. I really like the definition to happen at the same time. I also like that synonym to match. Like our, my belief in God coincides with yours, even though I'm not Catholic. All right, cynical is our next one. Oh, let's write something for coincide. Uh, maybe same can help us. We want like, there's the word coin in there. Maybe this might help you think of it. You want the coin to end up on the same side as what you think it should be. You want it to coincide with what you hope it will be? Maybe that'll work, I don't know. All right, cynical, somebody who thinks, sees the worst in people. That is somebody who is cynical. Somebody who is sarcastic, who doesn't have a good opinion of anything. They see the worst in people. I'm gonna write, sees the worst. They see everybody's bad traits. So this is not somebody you want as a friend. You do not want a cynical friend. They only see the bad things that are happening in the world. They don't see any of the good. Right, a despot is a, like a tyrant, a really mean ruler, a really mean and uh, cruel leader. Um, a dictator, is that synonym I'm gonna highlight? Um, and I'm gonna write, dictator, because we can all think of somebody. Um, Hitler, probably the top one that you could think of, right? The despot. All right, number seven, moving on to page 187. A feud, this is a fight. Family feud, it's a fight with your family. Um, it could be both a noun and a verb. I'm gonna circle those so that I remember that it can go in both forms. And I will, highlight long-term quarrel or to fight. Okay. If you haggle with somebody, you're kind of like bargaining with them. You're kind of um, bartering is another word to think of it. Um, I'm like in the synonyms, bargain with. Um, it's usually about a price. So if you are, say you went with your parents and they're gonna go buy you your first car and it's a used car, they might haggle with the person to try to get it down, get the price down. So they don't have to pay as much as uh, the person who originally is selling it wants. 
Something that is hardy is really, really strong. It's able to handle difficult conditions or, or it can mean that they are brave or tough. So I'm gonna highlight brave and tough. This is not the same as hearty. A hearty meal makes you feel really full, like some soup or something like that. Um, some like potato soup um, with a lot of meat and vegetables. Something that is hearty, it has, it's, it's hardened, it's ready to go. It's, it can withstand a lot of pressure. Uh, you might think of something like a cactus is very hardy. It can withstand the worst conditions. I'm going to write cactus to help me remember this. Um, and I'm going to highlight able to bear up under difficult conditions or heart treatment. It's not just like a plant. It can be a person too. This experience with having to stay home and being away from friends and being away from school, this is gonna make you hardier. It's gonna make you very hardy. You're gonna be able to um, withstand more difficult situations in your life because you've been through this, or this um, experience. All right, moving on. Number 10, harmonious. Uh, that can mean like in music, harmony, something that goes well together the two notes that blend well together, or it's and just in general, you get along. These, I hope that you and your siblings are being harmonious right now. Um, I hope that you and your parents are being harmonious right now and you're getting along. Even though you're two different elements, but you're blending pleasantly, like it says. So melodious helps me think of music. I'm gonna write music next to that. And I'm gonna highlight able to get along together well. And I'll just write get along. So then when I glance at this, I'll be able to remember it a little bit easier. All right, if you hoard something, mm, this is one that is very topical right now. What are people hoarding? Toilet paper, Purell, uh, hand sanitizer, Clorox wipes, um, paper towels, some uh, foods. So if you are keeping your own supply, you're, you're storing up, you're saving it for later. So store up, save. So a hoard is both a noun and a verb. The first one, if you actually are hoarding something, that's obviously the verb. The noun is what you have hidden. That's your hidden supply. So your hidden supply. So I'm going to write save. And then for my second definition, I'm going to write hidden supply. <laughs> Ran out of room there. All right, if somebody is indisposed, they are um, either ill, like a little ill, or they are not able to do something. Um, for example, if you answer the phone and your parents can't come to the phone because they don't feel well, or sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're in another room doing something else. Maybe they're in the restroom. You can say, I'm sorry, they're indisposed. Can I please take a message? That just means they, they are not able to answer the phone. They're not able to do it. Um, I'm going to highlight unwell because I think that's a little bit easier to remember in the synonyms. And um, for my second definition, I'm going to write not able to do something. A legacy is like an inheritance. It's what, what is handed down to you or uh, by you to your, for future children and grandchildren. A legacy can be literally something like, um, for example, my family's legacy is that my great grandfather started a farm um, over a hundred years ago, and it has been in this, all of my family members have helped to take care of it. We have a big sign, a plaque. It's a Hoosier Homestead Farm because it's been around for over a hundred years. That's my family's legacy. Another family legacy I have is that my dad was a carpenter, and he was well known all throughout my hometown, and uh, his ability to think creatively and to problem solve and to help others that is the legacy that I have from him. So 
something that he's handed down to me that I have inherited uh, those same skills. So it can be literally something or it can be uh, a trait of some sort. So it's, I like that inheritance. It's something, your heritage for synonyms, something handed down. Um, let's put, what could we put for legacy? Maybe from ancestors. Okay, let's move on to the last page, page 188. Legitimate, it is uh, rightful, reasonable, legal, right, genuine. Oops, 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 oops. It's legit, right? That's legit. That's true. That's legal. That's right. Mirth has nothing to do with birth, although it could. It's a lot of laughter. Fun, glee, I'm gonna write laughter, even though I highlighted it too, just because it helps me remember. Remember the more that you write these down, the more that you work with these vocab words, the easier it's gonna to be to recognize them, use them and do well on your test and also use them in everyday, your everyday language and your everyday writing. Um, and you'll sound smarter. <laughs> All right, officiate. Somebody who does an official duty, um, or that when you do that official duty, you are officiating. For example, right now I'm looking for an officiant for my wedding. I need somebody to perform the duties of um, a priest or a pastor or a preacher to marry my fiance and I. So I need somebody to actually do the duties, perform the duties. If you were Mrs. Marsh, you would laugh right there. I'm gonna write, do the job, the official job, okay? It's also to conduct a religious ceremony, to ref referee, so referee officiates the game, make sure everybody is doing what they're supposed to. Partial is not complete, not whole. It can also mean if something is biased or they favor some, one side over another, like they like something more than another. So you would not want a judge to be partial. You would want a judge to be impartial. If you patronize something, there's a couple of examples, a couple of definitions. It can mean you literally do business with it. Uh, so if you go to, uh, Laha, you are patronizing them. You are being a patron. You're giving them business. You're paying for the food. You're conducting a business transaction. Okay, you're supporting them financially. You are uh, supporting as a business, or it can mean you are, it's kind of like being sarcastic. You're saying, Oh, thank you so much for your hard work, but you don't really mean it. You are kind of like showing that you're better than them. You're showing your, that they are inferior. You're better than them. Even though the words out of your mouth they're saying are very kind and helpful and uh, gracious, but in reality, you're not being um, a good person, really. So you are treating someone as inferior, okay? So I will say, do business or to be rudely sarcastic. But in a positive way, like you're being sarcastic positively, but you mean it in a rude way. A rite is a ceremony like last rites, um, observance, a rite can, doesn't have to be, um, well, we have specific ones in the Catholic Church, but it's any formal custom or practice. So I'm going to also write ceremony. And then something or somebody that is sagacious, sagacious, it's a mouthful. I'm sure that we would have a lot of fun trying to say that word in class together. Sagacious, sagacious, 
sagacious. Okay, um, it means you are wise in a practical way. You are smart, you are astute, smart. Actually, I'm gonna challenge you to write wise because I think that is a sagacious word. All right, those are all, all of our vocab words. The PDF will be on Google Classroom. I hope, I hope, I hope that this helps and that you're actually watching these because um, I don't make them for myself and I would really love to see uh, some comments on here. So if you're enjoying it, please let me know. Uh, there will be ways to practice these vocab words on um, Google Classroom, like with the Quizlet and uh, Kahoot, of course. So make sure you're playing those and uh, so you can practice those words and they won't be so difficult when it comes to the quest. All right, I miss everybody. I hope you're having a great day. Happy Green Week.